Good morning and welcome to St Peter's Church. I've heard that some of you have been missing the Holy Communions. Um, It's tricky to uh, keep everything going with worshipping churches and worship outside of church and everything else that's happening as we move through these ways of lockdown and, and freedom. But I'm going to try and produce to celebrate with you communion once a month. So here we are. This is the communion for you to celebrate at home with whoever you are sharing your home with or just perhaps with me for October. So let's take a moment now to be still before God, to recognise that this time and space are holy and sacred, wherever, wherever we may be. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Dear Jesus, we gather together in our hearts and homes to meet with you this day because we know that you love us and have called us by name. We come with our hopes and with our fears. We come alone or of those we live. We come in communion with others in our parishes, even though we cannot physically be together at this time. Amen. And a moment to think about the week gone by, the good and the not so good, anything which we may need forgiveness for or anything which we need help in forgiving others for. And so we make our confession to God. God, our heavenly Father and Mother, we confess our sins to you. We are sorry for the times we have not treated your creation well, for the hurt we have caused it. We confess the missed phone calls, the lost opportunities to give someone a hug. We confess the ways in which we have undervalued those who turn out to be our key workers. We confess that we have not sought out your presence when the sun has shone, but waited until a rainy day. Amen. And let us receive forgiveness. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. Our Bible reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke. It's actually uh, Luke the Evangelist's special day this Sunday. This comes from Luke chapter 10, beginning at the first verse. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them out ahead of him in pairs to every town in the places where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone's there who shares in peace, Your peace will rest on that person, but if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the labourer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I want to begin by setting this into context because there have been some really interesting events which happened before Jesus sends 70 people, 70 pairs out into the mission field. Some uh, fairly well-known experiences have happened, particularly with the key disciples, the 12, and Peter, James, and John. It must feel for Jesus as though in his training of this commando squad to go out into the mission field, it's one step forward and several steps back. So the first of these events that that come before this is Jesus asking his disciples, who do you say that I am? You may remember that it's Peter who says, you are the Messiah. And Jesus is filled with joy. Yes, 
You've got it, Peter. You're not Simon anymore. You're Peter, Petros, the rock. That you are going to be building the church for me. And then only moments later, when Jesus starts to, starts to talk about his death, Peter says, no, Lord, this cannot happen to you. And Peter has to sharply rebuke him. Rebuke is a good, strong biblical word. And actually says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. That must really sting. Peter's gone from one moment really getting it and the next to being a million miles away from what Jesus has in mind. Shortly after that, we hear that as Jesus and his tribe are travelling from one place to the other, they are bickering. And when he asks them what they are bickering about, they've been arguing about who is the greatest among them. Not worshipping God, not praising Jesus, but which of us is the best disciple? Who does Jesus love the most? Who's going to have the most power in this new church? And Jesus turns them and said, Actually, a child has a greater place in the kingdom of God than you have. And then John gets very upset and says, Jesus, we found people who are doing work in your name, good godly work in your name, but they don't belong to us. So I stopped them. And Jesus, can you just imagine the face palm moment there, says, no, anyone who speaks in my name is with us. And don't forget, of course, that moment of transfiguration where Jesus takes Peter, James and John up to the mountainside where Jesus is transfigured, transformed. He takes on the true countenance of God and Elijah and Moses appear beside him. And Peter, James and John are swept up in that cloud of God's presence. And they're astounded, as any of us would be. And Peter says, foot in mouth, let's build three tents and we can stay here forever. And now, Jesus gathers 70 of his disciples around him. The 12, obviously, and others too. Others who said, Jesus, I will do anything for you, but let me go and look after such and such first. And he calls them and says, right, now's the time. You're to go out with nothing. No bag, no money, no spare shoes, spare clothes, anything. You're not to stop and talk to anybody on the wayside. You are to go to these places where I had been intending to go. And you're to take hospitality wherever you receive it. And if you don't get it, well, just wipe the dust off your sandals and move elsewhere. But don't move around from house to house trying to find the best accommodation. Give them your peace. They won't accept it. That peace comes back to you. The disciples were ready to flee the nest. Jesus sends them out in pairs, a bit like the ark. Remember, the animals go out, go enter the ark two by two. And now Jesus is sending out his disciples two by two, which suggests the disciples weren't all men, but there were couples, male and female. If we move on and read on in our gospel reading, we'll find amazing things happened. But the disciples had to realise it wasn't all about them. It wasn't all about what was familiar and comfortable for them because there are people out there who also belong to God. We live in really interesting times. Worrying, disturbing, uh, unsettling times, but really interesting. When the country first got sent down into a full lockdown, it was noted that the word prayer was one of the most searched for words on Google. And one week the church was declared to having broken the internet when services on Zoom broke that uh, social media platform. So many people have found God in unusual ways. And for those of us in the church, we should be celebrating this and finding ways of going out and connecting with those, with you, who have found God. It is not our job to remain in these beautiful buildings, to try to keep everything exactly the way it was, to keep us in a place of feeling safe and comfortable, but of letting everybody know that the kingdom of God has come near, of reminding ourselves truly the kingdom of God is near. In the beautiful building of St Peter's, in all our churches, but in strange other places as well, there is no boxing God in. 
We all belong to God. We are all loved by God. And perhaps some of us who are a bit more traditional need to be willing to accept the changes, to move forward and to welcome in the new times of change. Jesus says, the harvest is great, but the labourers are few. Perhaps we're not ones to go out. Perhaps we don't do social media. Perhaps YouTube is enough for us. Perhaps we need to feel safe and cosy in church. In which case, let us support those who are going out, as though they're missionaries going out to foreign lands. Let's encourage and nurture those who are able to connect in ways that we can't. And be joyful that in these worrying times, God's kingdom is growing. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you that your harvest is growing. Help us to be the ones to bring it in. Help us to reach out and connect with our friends and neighbours who are discovering you, maybe for the first time, or maybe renewing their relationship with you. Give us your grace. Give us your peace. Give us your direction in this new mission field. Amen. We're going to pray for others now. And the response is, Lord of love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are scared. Lord of love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are lonely. Lord of love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are tired. Lord of love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who seek wisdom. Lord of love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are unwell. Lord of love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn. Lord of love, hear our prayer. If you'd like to share in bread and wine at home, make sure you've got some to hand now. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the, the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death, and so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread and wine outpoured, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, being before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. 
Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy shall be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Join in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights bring light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us receive God's blessing. Keep us, good Lord, in, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be of those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and all those you love, today and always. Amen.